Today is August the 5th, 2016. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University. And today I am in Benita, Oklahoma to work on our project called Benita Glass House, Benita's Glass House Restaurant. And with me today is Brenda Johnson Miller. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Let's start with learning when and where you were born. I was born in Benita. Okay. Believe it or not, back in 44 at the old Benita Hospital. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, Brothers and sisters? Nope. Only child. And then we moved away different times. We lived in California and up in the mountains. And then we lived in Wichita, Kansas. And mom and dad wanted a grocery store. So they came back to Benita and bought a grocery store. And that's where I was raised and finished up from the eighth grade. And, uh, you moved back to Benita uh -huh. in the eighth grade? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Went to school here and everything. And then I got married and had my kids and got a divorce and needed a job and called Annabelle. And that was the beginning. Okay. What year did you graduate from high school? It was uh, 62. So integration had already taken place or was in the process of? Yeah, I, it, it didn't affect me because I was raised on the wrong side of the track, so I never did consider it any different. I, I just wouldn't, at Wichita we didn't, I didn't notice any difference and it, it just didn't dawn on me that what was taking place okay. until, uh, I think it hit me one time I went to uh, Bremerton, Washington on a bus and uh, it still, I was by myself and had baby with me, Billy was with me, and went in to eat on the bus stop, you know, we went into the snack bar wherever to eat and something, an issue was made out of a black and that's a I'm thinking, what's it? I, I just wasn't aware. And then somehow you can be that ignorant of things. But well, it's just different worlds too we grow up in. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I still there's no difference to me. Okay. I, I just uh, there's good and bad and everything. So you have one child? No, I've got two. You've got two, I've two sons. Well, then we Bill and Brad. And you were married at some point. Uh -huh, Hargrove, to a Bill Hargrove. And he worked at the Glass House. Okay. Did you that where you met him? No, I met him in school. I, well, he, actually, he was coming in our grocery store. And that's where I met him. And then went to school with him. And uh, while he was in school, he went to work at the Glass House. He worked with Warren Fetter. Okay. And he was in the bakery. And there was a Robert Ramsey that worked down there with him. And I remember one time when we was dating, he told me, said that Robert told him, says, you know, says it don't make a man to make babies, but it sure takes a man to raise them. Huh. And that left an impact on him. Yeah, he didn't raise his, but still, I've never forgot that, never. And it, it's so true. It is. So what was your maiden name? Johnson. That's why they call uh -huh. Johnson. And then I was married to Bill Hargrove, and then long later I married a, a Miller. Miller. Uh -huh. So I did. The introduction was okay to have it as Brenda Johnson Miller. Or do you mm -hmm. want Hargrove in there? Well, you might because everybody knew Hargrove, and my kids are named Hargrove. Okay. So well, I yeah. got to that then. Okay. Yeah. I didn't marry uh, Bob until oh God, seventy something. So right out of high school, while in high school, did you work? No. When you were mm -hmm. I helped in the grocery store. So you did work, but not... Yes, <laughs> yes, I worked from the eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, I was taught to work. Okay. Well, did you have a favorite subject in school? Uh, math. I like math and science, and Mr. Muncy was our teacher, a math teacher, and Mr. Souter. No, I can't remember who the science teacher was. Mr. Goodpath, I don't know, I can't remember. Well, when you graduated, you, did you have plans on what you wanted to do with the rest of your life? 
be a perfect wife and mother. Okay. You know, I was raised to where you did the cooking, you did the washing, and the, the old time way was how I was raised. You didn't need any skills other than taking care of a family. Well, I had to take over the family grocery store. Well, I didn't take it over, yeah, but it, they didn't think that I could do it because I wasn't married. I'd gotten a divorce, and because I wasn't married, you have to have a, a husband. Hmm. Yeah. Things change, don't they? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't want one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So when did you start working at the Glass House? After I got a divorce in, let's see, 60, 66. Okay. So he'd been open about 10 years uh -huh. at that time. Yeah. There had been a lot of them come and go. And so many of them's gone now. Well, did you know, how did you know Annabelle, or did you before you went out there? No, everybody knew Annabelle. They'd heard of her if they didn't know her personally. I didn't know her personally. But I went out there and one said, well, it's a good place to work. And of course, the kid's dad had worked there, and uh, Norman Fetter and Warren Fetter, and they're all friends. And one time Norman came, he was coming on leave, and the kid's dad was gone. He was, Bill was in the Navy, and I forget what Norman was in, was he in the Army or Air Force or something. Anyway, he come in on leave and he come to visit. Him and I got together because he had worked in the bakery, he knew how to bake. And we made a Concord grape pie and forgot to put the sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> a little tart, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Daddy, when he tasted it, his old jaws just went to some boy, okay, if you put some sugar in it. <laughs> well, you learn as you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of memories. Oh, well, what, so Annabelle hired you. Mm -hmm. She was the one that hired you. Mm -hmm. What was your job? I started in working in the kitchen on a sandwich board, and I worked with Nancy Smith. And Miss Roberts was there, and uh, that didn't work out too good for me. So uh, Annabelle put me. Let's see where do I work next? On the cafeteria line, I think. They had the cafeteria line, so she moved me over there, and I worked over there till it closed, because they close it after summer. And she put me in the snack bar, and I worked in the snack bar. I like that. And because we'd cook our orders and serve them and get to talk to the customers and everything, and I like that. And uh, I worked with, uh, let's see, there was uh, Corinne Hunt, Corinne, I think it was Corinne, is how they said it, and Letha Cordry. Mickey Chandler and uh, Edith Stanley. I got to thinking about them on the way of uh, Edith and Henry Stanley. Henry was the custodian and Edith worked there and they had an adopted daughter, Mary, and she worked there. And uh, she married a Stivers, but she worked there. I think she worked under the name Stivers, but anyway. They were my friends. You got to be friends with everybody. Working that closely in that many hours. Uh huh. You do. You get. You know everything about them. You know. You just. That's becomes the way it family. was. Becomes family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why did the sandwich line work out for you? Uh, I was real nervous okay. and trying to get the orders to come in and trying to get them, and it was a lot different then because you just had an oven. You couldn't throw stuff in the microwave and you get a bunch of orders out and stuff. And then the uh, charbroiler broke down, so we had them try to cook steaks back there too. And it was just too much. too much. I'd never done that kind of work and it was too much. So, yeah. how, so how old would you have been? I was uh, 20, about 23. Okay. Something like that. So, so you like the snack? 
Oh, Art yes, Barnes. I love that. Yes, I got the darndest thing one time. I got to talk with the college kids from Miami would stop in on their way to Tulsa or on their way home. That was, people would stop in there. That was the place. And uh, we'd have people that would plan their trip to stop there. Uh, back then we had pancakes. I've never eaten pancakes to compare with those pancakes. Mm. I don't, I give in that, that recipe. Because they made everything from scratch. And they made that pancake batter down in the bakery. And then they would bring it up and set it in our walk-in and it would set in there in big crocs things. And it'd kind of raise. And when we needed pancake batter for either the restaurant or the snack bar, we'd go in there and dip us up a bunch of it and go out. I would buy it by the gallon and take home. A lot of us did. <laughs> it, I don't know what was different about it, but it was the best pancake. And people would come in there for the pancakes. Regulars. Yeah. Regulars. Oh, yeah. It, but that was the place. People traveled that road all the time. And, from, and they had great big lollipops. And every kid wanted those great big lollipops. They had something like a, a pinwheel or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Great big. And every kid, I think they sold for $25. Yeah. Must have been a pretty big lollipop. Yeah, it was a big lollipop. They had smaller ones too, but we just that twenty-five dollar lollipop. That's priced today too. Wow. But yeah, of course they didn't sell any of them out of it still. And we had an assistant manager, Thelma, and I can't remember what her last name was. She lived in Miami, but we had a fish pond in the front of the dining room with great big goldfish in it. In the building? In the building. Mm -hmm. In the front of the dining room. As you came in, you would stand there to be uh, seated and you was right in front of the fish. The fish pond was right over here and you stood here and you could look down at the fish pond and stuff and the water would be rippling and it was neat. It was a big rock front. Yeah, it was pretty. And she took care of the fish. She had names for them. And, yeah. Would people toss coins in yep. there? Would they? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And then the lollipop sat on the desk there where you checked in. So that was right there. So if they wanted that. Yeah. I was trying to think who the hostess was then. I don't know. It was Ms. Reed. Geraldine Reed was a hostess one time. For the broiler room? Uh-huh. Did you work in the broiler room? Uh-huh. I ended up going in there. Being a server, uh -huh. a right, a waitress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I was the last one when it was closed up to make it. That was my third trip there was when they closed it up to make it a McDonald's. And uh, I was the last one. And at that time, they was just phasing it all out, and I was doing it all. I was waiting and, and doing the register and seating, and, and I'm slow. Well, the, we had a highway patrolman that came in there when I first was working there, and I was working in the snack bar. His name was Jack Frost. <laughs> and uh, they had all, oh, the highway patrolman, everybody come in there, and it was just a all of us talking and everything, you know, and he got a big kick out of me. I guess I moved kind of slow, and he kid me, and he called me. My nickname was Lightning. So <laughs> he come there. How you doing today, Lightning? <laughs> and uh, we had uh, Corinne's daughters, the Hunt girls, Priscilla and Dorothy, both worked there. Whatever happened to them, I'd like to know. But Ms. Hunt was just, she had a big family, a bunch of kids, and her husband did the harvest, the wheat harvest. And 
it just seemed like she mothered everybody. She was she was a special lady. So well, let's back up and get, make sure we get this right. You said you worked there three times. Uh huh. So the first time you did what? I, that's when I did I did it all. I did the sandwich bar. I the cafeteria did, line. A cafeteria line, snack bar, and then in the broiler room. Did it all? Okay. Yeah. And that was for about how long? Three. Let's see. Two or three years. Okay. Then you took a break and did something. I uh, got married. Okay. And uh, I went to New Mexico. And I came back. And went back to work there. Okay. And uh, Annabelle was still there and hired you mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. okay. I was trying to think. I let no. I worked there the first time a year or two because I quit there and went and cooked out the state hospital. And that's where I got into cooking, the state hospital. And uh, then I stopped and went to college. Okay. And got a degree in education. I didn't want to teach. So uh, I ended up marrying, uh, it's when I married uh, Miller. And uh, he was a truck driver and I ended up going with him on the truck some, and then we ended up buying a nightclub. So I got into that, and we opened up a restaurant. So I run bingo between Tendon Bar and running bingo and cooking in the restaurant. <laughs> it was pretty busy. And then he died, and I ended up driving a truck again. And a semi? Uh-huh. Wow. And then when I decided I didn't want to do that anymore, I called Annabelle again. <laughs> and she put me to work that day. Yep. And, and where, where did she put you to work? Uh, dining room, broiler room. Yeah. Waitress again? Yeah. Yeah. I never buried then after that because it, they'd started closing everything down. I'll take that back. I did. Uh, they got to where this closing the, how was it? I worked nights. They was phasing it down and they had too many waitresses and stuff and so you, you had to do something. So I went to work nights in the, they had a, it was where the cafeteria was, but it was like a, what you call it? It was like a snack bar, except it was, They'd come through and pick up sandwiches or like, like a kind of a cat. I don't know what you call it because they'd come through and pick up sandwiches and order a drink and you'd fix that or if they wanted a hamburger you'd go back and cook a hamburger for them and stuff. Maybe short order. Yeah, something like that. I don't know what you call it. But anyway, that's what it was. And I went to work there nights. Okay. And then when they opened up the dining room again, we wanted to go back to dining room. So the second time around, part time period, like years. My uh, my let's again. see, that time I worked there, I'm trying to get my time together. I, I don't know. I probably worked there, I just don't know, a couple of years probably. In the 60s or would that have been in the 70s? Yeah, no, let's see, that would have been 70. That would have been the early 70s. I'm confused right now about, I came back from, that's when I came back from New Mexico and went to work there and I'm trying to think where I went. After that, I must have moved or something. I did something, I don't know, but anyway, I quit. And uh, not what I did. Was it still host international at that point, at the second time around? Or uh, it Howard no, Howard? it was Howard Johnson's. Howard Johnson's, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the, the first one. time I wore the yellow. Okay, and the second time? Uh, it was green. We had a green jumper like thing. Hmm. Okay. But those yellow uniforms. Was it still called a glass house? Uh -huh. when you it's worked? always glass house. Okay. To me, it's still a glass house. I don't know what anybody else calls it. Well, when Howard Johnson's had it, was it still referred to as the glass house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But uniforms were green. Yeah. Okay. 
they had a, a green, like a, a jumper, You'd come around you and tied, and you had a, a brown plaid shirt. And then if you worked over on the line part, you wore pants, green pants. Women could wear pants? Uh-huh. But you know, back they tell me, when it first opened up, they had a manager, and I can't think what her name was, but it was before, Annabelle was the assistant manager when it first opened up, the way I understand it. And you had to wear a hose and a girdle and everything. And they said that she'd go by and hit you on the rear to make sure you had a girdle on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't happen today. <laughs> no. But uh, when I worked there the first time, we, we wore girdles, and, or I did, and uh, I wore sport hose big old heavy sport hose that you'd wash in the washing machine that come from pennies. And uh, just, it was different. And those bows, you had to tie them just so, so. That got to be an art, tying those white bows on that apron. You had to do it yourself backwards. Or did and you turned it, do it, no, you did it in front and then turned it around. Okay. And they would start so stiff and those yellow uniforms one time, Mom didn't know. And she took my yellow uniforms and washed them with fiberglass curtains. Uh-huh. And I didn't know what it was. I go digging and digging and digging. We like to never got that out of there. Why, God. <laughs> Here I'm digging and digging at work. <laughs> yeah, it was, we had, uh, Lemon pies, mile high lemon pie on the menu for the dining room, the broiler room. That was the first time, that was when it was host. And we had uh, strawberry shortcakes that would be piled up with a sponge cake like they do. And we'd have a big old dip of ice cream in it and put strawberries on it and then cover it all over with whipped cream, put a strawberry right on top. And people, when you'd take that out, oh, oh, they would just go, and something about that pie, you'd walk by with that pie, that lemon pie, because it was, it was a pie. Those guys downstairs made it big. And we covered it with whipped cream, stood it up and put whipped cream on it. And everybody'd have a bit over that. And then we had a deep dish apple pie. Mm. And they kept it on the steam table back in the, where the, well, she was a cook, she did the broiler cook and stuff like that. And she had her steam set up, you know, her little steam table with her mashed potatoes and everything like that in it. And uh, that apple pie, and it was hot apples with uh, cinnamon, with uh, raisins and almonds and stuff. And they put it in a, a bowl, hot bowl of hot stuff. And then they had rounds of pastry that they'd put on top. And then they'd put a big cheddar cheese ball on top of that and then put hot cinnamon sauce on top of that. <laughs> yeah. So that was quite the deal. Yeah, it sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably didn't cost very much in those days. I can't in those remember days. what they cost. I, it probably not. I think I saw on the menu like 45 cents or probably, something, something like probably. that. Probably. Yeah. But it was... Well, would you do that or would someone in the... in The the, the lady that worked the broiler would do it. Uh -huh. So the waitresses she, didn't have to. Huh. No. Okay. We made our salads. We had our salad set back there and we'd go make up our salads and stuff. And we got our bread out of the bread box and picked up our food up there from the... Deal, but that was, yeah. And we'd take a, on our baked potatoes, we took a little uh, triad thing out with the uh, bacon bits and butter and sour cream and held it for the people to get it stuck out. Then we had a chicken pot pie on the menu that uh, we'd take it out in a little bowl, let would set it up for us in a bowl, and it had the pastry like the pie had. And, uh, We'd take that out to the table, and then we would 
stand there and take the crust off and put it in their plate and then spoon the filling over it and stuff for them. And that was quite a presentation. Yes, interesting way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I've thought so many times people in these restaurants they'll serve chicken pot pie, but that was the perfect way because nothing was wasted, you know, and it was all fresh and everything. It wasn't doughy and gooey. And of course we didn't have a microwave, so everything was uh, kept hot back in the back. We'd put it in this big steam unit and get it hot, and then we'd take it out. And, now I did that when I was on the sandwich bar, and we'd uh, put foil over those big pans and stick it in the steam table. We had a table there with hot water in it, mm -hmm. and that's what kept everything warm. Well, would the, would the chicken pot pie have a bottom crust or just uh -huh, the top? Just the top. Okay. Uh -huh. I wondered, and so it was cooked in a metal pan or something with the pastry on top? No. No? No, it wasn't cooked that way. It was just hot. Uh, it was your vegetables and your chicken stock that was thickened mm -hmm. and everything, and we had mixed vegetables. And uh, it would just be, the, it would be in a, the bowls, I can't remember if she dipped, no, it was in the bowls. We fixed the bowls of it back in the back and we'd have little, like crocks. And we'd have those vegetables and that stock in them. And uh, she'd have them out in a warmer, I think. Okay. And a drawer. And when she got an order, she'd take it out and set it on a plate, and then she'd take this crust and put it on top of that crock, and put a, I think a sprig of parsley on front, on top of it, best I can remember, because it had to be garnished. And then we would take it out as a waitress, we'd pick it up on her, put it on her tray, and it seems like it set, there would be a plate, and then a liner, and then the bowl. And we would take the, the liner off, put the plate down where the plate was there. I guess we'd put the plate down. We'd pick the deal up, put the plate down, and then we'd stand there with the big spoon that was there and take the crust off and put it in the plate. And then we'd put the filling on top of that and fix it for them. So the crust was already cooked? Uh -huh. It wasn't right. cooked on top uh -huh. of it? No. Huh. Okay. They had, they, the guys down in the bakery would cook up rounds of pastry that's about, oh, that thick, that's the way I remember it. And we used them for the deep dish pies and the chicken pot pie. And so it, it worked out and did double duty. Probably yeah. tastes good just by itself. Oh it? yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> they had good food. They really did. It, it was, when I, First went to work there, they had already discontinued the steaks. We had a chopped steak, and I think they had shrimp and pork chops. And for the first little bit, they might have had a T-bone on there. But back, I guess, when it opened, they had everything. Yes. And I can remember we lived in uh, Wichita, and uh, Judy Canova was a, that's before your time, but that was an actress, and she sang, and she had pigtails, and comedy deal, and uh, Mom had picked, got the Bonita Journal, she had it sent to Wichita, and there in the journal was where Judy Canova had stopped the glass house. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that was, they had all kind of people, so that was back before people flew everywhere. So. Okay, so then the third time. Uh huh. What did you, what was the time? Uh, let's see, that was. Before yeah. McDonald's? After McDonald's? Before, before McDonald's. Just okay. before. I was one of the last ones out when it was made at McDonald's. So it was still Howard Johnson's the third time? Mm hmm. And I was there three years that time. Did Annabelle hire you again that time? Mm -hmm. So she was there. She every, was there then. Every okay. time she hired me, every time. She always left on good terms then. Yeah. Or she wouldn't hire you. Back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and when I quit the one time, 
to go to the state hospital. She told me, she says, you're making a big mistake. I says, you're making a mistake, Brenda. I said, you should stay here. And I've thought so many times. She was right, huh? <laughs> I look back. I had a calendar, and I kept track of my tips. And it was amazing that later on in years I worked other places, and I looked, found that and looked at it, and the tips hadn't changed that much. You made that much more there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the biggest one you ever got? Do you remember? Uh, Sticking out. Probably, oh, a dollar tip, we called it a George, and a dollar tip was nice, and if you made a five, oh my gosh, you know, but, yeah. Did you, did you have a name for it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you just beamed. <laughs> I know one time I had a table, and it was a family, and the man laid a five down and put it down. And I watched him put it down. Oh boy, I was so tickled. And uh, when I went to clear the table, it wasn't there. And someone said his wife picked it up. And oh, I was just heartbroken. I told Annabelle, I said, oh, you know. And she says, now oh, Brenda, don't be that upset with her. And I said, but that ain't right. She says, look, said, if a woman does something like that, maybe she needs some money and he didn't give it to her. Maybe that's how she had to come up with her money. Mm -hmm. And really? You stop and think about it. And then Annabelle told me one time, I mean, Annabelle was something else. And she told me one time, Mom was calling, wanting me to do this or wanting me to do that, and every time I moved, I was supposed to, I've been an only child. You're supposed to just answer and be right, you know. And I was upset about it. And she says, I know. It's rough. But she said, my mom's the same way. My mom the same way. But she said, I learned a long time ago that one of you has to be an adult. Mm -hmm. And said, if, if they're going to be this way and act childish, then you have to stand up and be the adult. And I always remembered that. And you have to look at things from all different angles. She taught me that. Don't just look at it one way. Everybody's got a different view. So she she was good with everybody, I think. A good people person, sounds like. She was. Mm -hmm. She was. She had a lot of wisdom. I don't think people appreciated her enough. You know, a lot of times when you're right there, you don't until you look back. When it's happening, it just travels by and your emotions get all involved. You're either happy or you're sad or something in your private life's interfering and, and stuff or you've got a bill to pay and you don't, you don't realize the big picture. It's a, amazing what we go through in life. It's a shame that you have to get stanged old before you realize all this. <laughs> it's the journey though, they say. It's a journey. And I tell everybody young to make memories yeah. and do what you can. Uh, we had a library in Benita, Miss Moss. And we'd go in there and just visit with her. I did, I just loved her. And she was in City Hall at the time. And she was telling when she was in college one time, she could either 
she had a chance to go to something, some kind of a play or something, or she could eat. And she chose the play. She says, if you get a chance to do something and you know it's not going to come around again, you better do it. And I've often thought about that. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance, do what you can, because it might not come around again. And uh, that applies to all of it. The glass house was special. We had, I can't remember the, what the guy's name was that bought supplies. But it was interesting. People would go under that thing and honk. Everybody honked when they went under that. And my boyfriend, who's that honking at you? to know. <laughs> yeah, that was it, yeah, yeah. Would well, you have to clean the windows? No. Yeah. We'd clean them just up so far, you know. And one time I made a gal, that was the second, third time around, I was working with this girl. That poor girl was so lazy. Oh my God. She, if she made a sandwich, she couldn't use both hands. She'd use one hand. I tell her, I said, God gave you two hands. You're supposed to use both hands and your brain. <laughs> and one time we had an inspection coming up. We've got to get all these booths cleaned. We've got to get everything done. Well, I'd made her mad because I'd criticized the way she'd make sandwiches, I guess. And I had to do all of them by myself, so I learned sometimes it's not always wise <laughs> to you, do that. Or you could have let Helen Annabelle in on the yeah. what's going on too. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, it was. <laughs> well, were there any any stranded travelers during snowstorms or anything? Oh like that? yes, yes. That's an event. We had a blizzard. And it was a blizzard. And uh, that night, I got off late, and my folks was calling to see if I made it home. Okay, if I was going to make it home. I'll make it, I'll make it. Well, if you're not home by such and such, well, I'm going to come out there. Okay. So Mike Lewis and my cousin, Betty Cox, and me, we got off work. And we went down and got my little old blue Chevelle to go home. Uh, Betty and I did. Mike got in his car, whatever it was. We all got stuck. Well, I tore the transmission out of my car trying to get out. And here comes Daddy, big old Pontiac. He got stuck. So Pat Lair comes out in the equipment to clear off the parking lot, and he takes us back to Benita. Well, the next morning, we go out to work, I do. There's no electricity, and everything's electric except one grill. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to run that place. Of course, there's trucks all over, there's cars all over, there's everything, and we're trying to run that restaurant with that one grill, and they'd make coffee by boiling water and pouring it off coffee grounds, and then we was trying to keep it warm in the pots with candles, <laughs> and people was complaining about their cold coffee. Well, there's lucky getting coffee at all. Mm -hmm. And they was trying to take care of everybody and feed them and everything. We did the best we could. But, oh, Lord, we was glad when that electric come back on. And then I was working there in the broiler room one time when the, the broiler got on fire. That was exciting. Oh. And they come in with fire extinguishers and there's people sitting all over. Yeah. They had to close it down for a day or two. And it's 
there's just too many things to, we used to have the proms on the other side, the uh, cafeteria line. They'd set that up for banquets and proms and, and Bob Shoulders used to play there and Larry uh, Thompson and all of them and I never went to meet but Cherry Cherry Pie. I can remember them playing that at the proms and stuff and everybody dressed up and stuff. My first day there, very first day, they had a prom. And I was not, I'd never been in a restaurant kitchen or anything. And Annabelle puts me to uh, tear enough lettuce for salads. And I didn't know what romaine was. And that was different to me. Tearing that stuff up and fixing those salads for that. Then uh, one time we whipped butter. This is all my experience in the kitchen there. And we whipped our own butter. So they told me that the big mixer was sitting there. I've never been around anything like that, never watched it done. But they told me, said, you put so many pounds of butter in that thing, the oleo. And I uh, can't remember if you put so much water or something. Anyway, I put the wire whip in it. I didn't know to use a pad. I put that wire whip in and started it going. And all of that cold butter got in the middle of that wire whisk. And I didn't know what to do. And here we are trying to dig that butter, that oleo, out of that thing. Finally, that wasn't working too good. So I got the bright idea to stick it in the oven and melt it and get it out of it that way. And so I did that, and I stuck it in there. Needless to say, I did not get the kind of butter I was supposed to get. <laughs> <laughs> then one time she had me sauteing mushrooms. That was different. And I learned to clean shrimp. Uh, we had boiled shrimp, and I learned how to clean them, did which I'd to, never done. Did you have to devein them? Uh -huh. That's, That's what I was learning how to do, yes. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Either. You should work for Annabelle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't think that lasts very long. <laughs> then she had something on there I loved. She'd make an orange biscuit. Mm. And uh, it was orange juice thickened, and then she just put her biscuits on top of it and baked it. Oh, that was good. And uh, Annabelle was always come back there for some of those dinners. She'd fix chicken. Uh, I can't remember what kind of spices, but she'd put a marinade on the chicken breast and bake them. And that's what we had for banquets a lot. And she would do that? She'd be back there overseeing it, yeah, and seeing that it was done, yeah. Pick the menu and do all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, she was right there. She was she was hands-on. She, she wouldn't stay right with you, but she'd pass through to see. and. She'd come up with menus and tell you, you know, what was going to go on. And would, would she handle the difficult customers? Like if someone wanted to complain about something, would she handle that? Or would you have to do it yourself? It started with us, and then we'd uh, turn it over to the hostess. Okay. And uh, then if the hostess had an issue, we'd, it just kept going. Warren or, no, Warren was just... <laughs> Oh, yes. I tell you what, I tell him, I say, if you move any slower, you're going to be going backwards. That man never got in a hurry. I never saw him walk fast, ever. Well, I wouldn't think he'd get frustrated very easy either. Uh -uh. Just calm, cool. Yeah, just, and then, you know. They balanced each other pretty well for him and Abby. I, yeah, I never did see her get really upset that I can remember. I can't remember. And she got me to eating uh, macaroni and cheese with chili on it. That was one of her specials. And we'd have macaroni and she'd go get her a plate of macaroni that was on the 
cafeteria line a lot of times. She'd go through and get her a plate of macaroni and top it off with chili. And when I first saw it, oh my God. And well, I had to try it. Now, if I don't want macaroni and chili or uh, chili on my eggs, she got me eating chili on everything. And it was homemade chili or house-made chili? <sighs> yeah, to start with it was. They made everything. They made their soup. They had a delicious homemade vegetable soup. I think Edith made it. And in the bakery, well, uh, Kirkendall, Charlie made a lot of it. Okay, yes, he talked about making uh, things. Oh, yeah. I'd like to get those recipes from him. He doesn't have them, I ask him. Really? Yeah, I ask him. Yeah. He said no. I wonder if they're just lost. I don't know. Plus, it would you'd have to break it down to an individual size, uh -huh. you know, family size, yeah. not, not ten pounds at a time. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's I've, I've been that. used. I've been used to doing that because I did institutional cooking and everything. I've gone through so many things, and I used to when I had my bingo place, I'd cook for the bingo players, and so I love to cook. Well, so. at the reunion, you ask someone, you need to start a recipe book. I know it. I know it. They made uh, their blue cheese dressing. Was house made? By yes. There were thousand. Yeah. And that was before ranch. We had Thousand Island and blue cheese and French. The French, I think they bought the French. But they made the thousand and the blue cheese. And I know I got back there to try to see how the blue cheese was made and it was with mayonnaise and sour cream or buttermilk and blue cheese crumbles. I think it was to be good. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Edith made that. Okay. A cookbook someone needs to do. Yeah, yeah. And in entertainment, someone had mentioned flamingos, flamingo dancers or something like that? Oh, yes. One time <laughs> I was working there. And uh, I had a busload of flamenco dancers that didn't speak English. They was traveling through. And there was like three of us waitresses. Nobody spoke Spanish. And we're trying to get the orders. And we had a big hot dog on the menu. And I think I sold a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> that was easy to. <laughs> but oh my goodness, you just, it was, that was memorable. And then one time I was working. The last time when I was working over there, everybody had gone home but me. I was left in there by myself for some reason. Either they was they was doing something, but I was there by myself, and I got a bus load. And I had to cook it and and get the red stir fix the great do all of it. So, oh my gosh, but it, you know you can just do what you can do. Well, and it, did you tell them I'm not? I'm here by myself. So yeah. Be, oh, yeah. be patient. And oh yeah. Most people are if you yeah. they know that yeah. up front. Yeah. You just do the best you can and laugh a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you show you're frustrated, it just adds to it. So you have to just. I've learned that big time. You can say a lot of things if you smile. I made one guy mad. I guess he was somebody. It wasn't anybody to me, I didn't know him. And uh, we were busy, busy, busy. And they seated him on my station. And oh, he got an attitude. And I was doing the best I could to take care of everything. He just kept on pursuing. I looked at him and I said, you know, sir, you didn't have to stop here. We're doing the best we can. There's other places to eat. And if you can't talk to him that way, I said, hey, 
and, oh my God, that's such and such. Okay? You darn sure won't get a tip, and he's a big tipper. Well, that's the way it is. And when he left, he left me a big tip. And his attitude changed. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, I'm in trouble now. But it all worked out. You had to bite your tongue a lot of times, I bet. Oh, you yeah. Did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. But when you're just pushed to the limit, you just... Like I said, you get stressed, too. And it always bugged me that some of the waitresses, we had a few, that would brag about conning the people into Tiffna and stuff and how they worked them and they did that. And that, that rubbed me the wrong way. I'm, I'm a people person and I always tried to do the best I could and be good to people and, and everything and I didn't want to feel like I was using them or, or conning them. I, I never did like that. Well, there were a lot. There were more travelers and locals than locals. Yeah, we didn't have very many locals. That would be. We had a few people that would come out. Cause really, that was the best place, nicest place to come, unless you went to the lake. Mm -hmm. People go over on Grand Lake and eat and places like that. But the Glass House was the place. And so, yeah, they'd come out. And I guess back when it first opened up, it was really the place to go. But by the time I got there, it, it was the first time I was there. People came out more. And we had big business meetings. GRDA came out there. As a matter of fact, GRDA would come out for their meetings. Grand River Dam Authority. Okay. Uh huh. And my cousin, I'm a Jean Barbie was secretary to the chief engineer. So I'd tell her that they was coming out and everything. And so I'd go around and take their orders and I'd look at him and he had the prettiest blue eyes and he was always smoking a pipe. He was so distinguished and everything. And, and so one night we was out dancing and he was there and he was single. Well, I started dating him. I dated him for two years. So that was, I, I got meeting there. And then we moved on with our lives. And then later on, when I moved down here 10 years ago, we started dating again. And we, we stayed friends till he died. And he died on my birthday. But uh, that was a long friendship. Those blue eyes hung with you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He was something. <laughs> yeah. You never get over something like that. Mm -hmm. My son said, Mama said, I'd have never made it out of the third grade without him. He helped him with these lessons. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. You met a lot of interesting people there. Some of them stayed in your life and some of them didn't. But you know, I bet you the customers if there was some way of getting in touch or having some kind of a deal to where customers, because that was a place, you know, they all remembered stopping there. And I bet the customers have as many stories as the employees. Well, did they stop for the food or just to say they've been to the glass house and for a Both. photograph or whatever? Both. Both. And they always wanted a window seat? Yep. Oh, yes. And it was so hot in the summer, that sun coming in there. And we had those old yellow uniforms on. It was nylon, hot. And those starched aprons, and we were supposed to wear a little black tie around our neck. I hated that tie. And if they caught you without that tie, you had to buy another one. There's no telling how many rolls of ribbon I bought because I was getting caught forever without that tie on. It was too hot to wear that tie. <laughs> Brenda, where's your tie? 
Come here. <laughs> well, did you have to report your tips, or do that was no. just keep it keep it quiet? Yep, nothing was reported, and <clears throat> I found it a bad policy to discuss your tips because some of them was always bragging. I made this. I made that. Well, that causes jealousy. Someone's got, you've got your feelings hurt, somebody else has got their feelings hurt or something. It just causes, so I got to where I never discussed tips. I never counted my tips till I went home. Because you'd see some of them stand there counting their tips, they'd have their little jar sitting there and counting their tips and stuff. And I, I never did. You did keep them in your pocket? Uh -huh. you and some of them put them in a cup, because I can remember being in a cup. I don't remember what the deal was. But I can remember them standing there counting, because we had two stations. We had a front station and we had a back station. The second time I lived, worked there, I guess it was. But I can remember the girls standing with cups and counting their tips, and I thought, that's not that's not good. And we worked with, uh, the last time I worked there, uh, Lucius Taylor was an assistant manager. I haven't heard that name. I know it. And he was an assistant manager. I don't, I, anyway, I saw him after I came back here. I was in at Brahms and run on to him. And he was working at a chicken factory. And somebody else that they ought to interview is uh, Sally Hamilton. And her name's never came, I don't know what her married name is now. She lives up at Blue Jacket. But she was a good waitress. And she worked there a long time. And she was there when it closed. And uh, she went to, uh, Day, what was Dayton or Day, something they had a deal here and she went to work there and all whatever happened to her. But uh, I loved Sally and there was a, uh, I was trying to think of some of their names. Well, I mean, the third time you came back, were there still some that had been there when you were there the first and second? Uh, some that stayed the whole time. But Warren. <laughs> And uh, Vera Lee, so the third time would have been in the it was in the 80s. 80s. McDonald's came in what mid 80s, something like that. Uh, I moved to Missouri in 80, 85. It probably closed in. 80, I was trying to think. My husband died in 82, and then I drove a truck. And I came back and went to work there in 83 or 84, and I was there three years. Okay, so. so, and then it was closed. They thought they could have it ready to open it as McDonald's in uh, a year, but it didn't happen. It took them longer than that mm. to get it changed over. And it was Howard Johnson's so, third, uh, third, third time. Right, right. And it had gotten to where it was just more or less hamburgers. But then it, it didn't have the... I was trying to think what was on the menu. They always had a chopped sirloin steak. They had that forever. And they'd serve it with a big piece of onion on top of it, grilled onion on top of it. Uh, I remember on one of the menus there was chili and rice. That was something different. I'd never. Hmm. And uh, that was on the menu. We had fish, fish and chips. I'm sure there was chicken strips or something. Yeah, the breakfast menu. Uh huh. Was the bakery still 
uh, on, you know, uh, no, on site. Not by then. Uh -uh. I don't know what they did for. Uh, now the bakery closed, and you used to when it, their first time, the dish where they did dishes was down below in the basement, first floor. Then you went up, and they had a dumb waiter on a conveyor that you would take your trays of dishes and stick them on that thing, and it kept going down. Well, every now and then, sometimes you'd miss and not get it on there just right, or it wouldn't be loaded, and lots of dishes would all fall to the bottom. You'd hear all that. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. One time I was working there, we had hot syrup for the pancakes. And the dishes sat here in the el the thing that pushed them up, the elevator thing. And uh, we had a big old container of hot syrup that we put on the pancakes, those scrumptious pancakes. <laughs> We'd serve them with a great little big ball of butter on top of them. We'd go dig our butter out and stick on top of that. That's how we served them with a little hot container of uh, syrup. And I was getting syrup for doing something, and I dumped that whole thing of syrup down that all on those dishes. What a mess. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to admit I did it. Yeah. Did they deduct anything from your paycheck? <laughs> they should have. <laughs> oh, God. The cleanup. Oh, we had it, all kinds of things. We had a, I can't think of what her name, her sister's name was Virginia. We had some Duke girls that worked there. And they was about, anyway, six feet tall, not bigger. Big girls. And the oldest one, we'd have, she'd have a, a bus tub, and I can't remember. I think we, we went back and got the ice in a bus tub and took it out there. And when she got through, she'd just take that bus tub and she could push it, and it would go all the way back to the ice machine. It was like bowling, <laughs> and it got to be a deal. But just, and the mugs, we had big old mugs that we served. And I can't remember. We had big yellow trays that we carried stuff out on. And uh, we'd have those mugs. And I bet they weighed a pound. There's no telling what those trays weighed when we piled them all up. Yeah, and you're little, I'm thinking. Yeah. It, and it but they could, oh my God. And we carried that out, and we had our uh, tray stand set out there. And you knew how to get down to get out from under that. And so I never could carry up like this. I never could do that. I'd have to carry it on my arm like this. But uh, it was something else. Good times. Yeah. 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 If you got the back, I got to where I'd like to work the back. You got bigger tables back there. I didn't really like the big tables, but I'd take it back there because I'd say, I need the exercise, I'll do it. Because we running back and forth. That way I got my exercise. <laughs> what kind of shoes did you wear? Those big old white nurse's shoes. Nurse's shoes, okay. Yeah, big old white nurse's shoes. Every time. Good traction and good yep. Yep. support, I guess. Yeah, that's what we wore, those big white shoes and support hose. and. That's poor host, but oh man, I hated those things. <laughs> then you'd cook hamburgers and be around that all day, and then you'd decide to go out dancing there. You smelled like a hamburger, don't you know that was good? <laughs> <laughs> Bagans, yes. <laughs> Well, the whole cafeteria probably had a unique smell to it with all of those oh, yeah. things being cooked. Oh, yeah. And they made some kind of spaghetti they called Oklahoma spaghetti. And I've never seen a recipe for it, but my gosh, I loved it. It had vegetables in it. Should have, I can remember there was carrots and peppers, and, but 
and spaghetti, but we can add it on the cafeteria line. We have a sauce, a tomato base. It was sauce. all in it. It was just a big pot of this stuff. And the noodles were mixed in. Uh huh. With it. Uh huh. And you just dip it out on the cafeteria line. And I worked that cafeteria line with uh, Edwina Hoskins. She was a gal. And and with uh, her sister-in-law, Janie Goins. And that's, I worked there with them. And I can remember closing up and everything. And our hot dogs, when I worked in the snack bar, I just go back and forth. You can tell I can't stay on any one subject. Whoever's going over this is gonna have a heyday. But anyway, uh, our hot dogs, we would cut diagonal little cuts in them and uh, then they would uh, put them on the grill and when you put them on the grill they kind of open up and brown real good and so it made them look really good and uh, our eggs in there we uh, cooked eggs in a skillet we put them on the grill we put a pat of butter in that skillet and we cracked our eggs in a bowl and we'd put them in the skillet then, out of that bowl, and you'd flip them. I I could flip eggs. <laughs> you couldn't use a spatula on the skillet, you had to flip them. Why do you cook much today? No, it's just me and the dogs, and the dogs aren't <laughs> Just me and the, I do though, uh, I do cook, as a matter of fact, I cook at a uh, wind up food site and I'm on call. I cooked yesterday, but uh, yeah, I'm on call. I go visit with the seniors and they say there's never a dull moment if I'm around. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing. Yeah. It's a very we good all have We yeah. all have fun. Yes. And if you can't laugh, then you don't. You better find something else to do. <laughs> so, yeah. But actually, I think the glass house out of everything I've done, I think the glass house was the best. Mm -hmm. I worked at Tantara up on Lake of the Ozarks and around. That was unique. Uh, that was a good place. It was kind of like the glass house in a, in a way because you had some of your repeat customers. I had special people. But it was same, looked out, you had big windows and looked over the lake where at the glass house you looked out on the turnpike in the airport. They'd have fly-ins, they used to have fly-ins there at the glass house. I don't know if they do now or not. But uh, it was a good thing for Benita and a good thing for you. Oh, yes. Oh, it wasn't just me. I mean, the people that have worked there, that it's helped. Uh, people that had never worked with the public, of course I was raised working with the public, but there was people that had never been exposed to anything like that. And it, and Annabelle was good to, to try to work you around where you'd work, where you could work in. I don't think she ever put anybody in a position that they couldn't, you know. I have to give her a lot of credit. I really do. Sounds like she opened a lot of doors for people too. She did, and she took care of people. And the whole, it sounds like all of you gave a good impression of Oklahoma, since it was tourists oh, coming we, through. Oh yeah. And they, they'd ask us, say, well what does those signs mean? Don't drive in the smoke. Well, when the Indians get on the war path. <laughs> they, they believe you? Yep. And they, they come in wanting to see the Indians and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they had postcards there. And they'd drop them in. And we picked up the postcards and looked at them. And it would be funny. Well, we haven't seen any Indians. And just. It was funny. 
They would mail them in the, and you would read what they wrote. Yeah, because they just, you know, it was just a little postcard yeah. and they'd drop them in to, to send them off because they'd pick them up and take them to the post office, Annabelle or somebody did. And so they was just laying there so we'd pick them up and look, see what their remarks was. <laughs> I bet you did see some interesting yeah, ones. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and uh, what was that? Oh, and we always wearing those yellow dresses. We had a ball. I worked in the snack bar with uh, Dorothy and Priscilla too, and was young. I was in my twenties, and they was both young, so we had a lot of fun. And college boys and stuff coming in, college kids and so. Uh, one time, I was waiting on these college boys, and uh, this one they'd been stopping every week and so you got to talking to him. He was asking me about myself and I said, well, I've got two boys. Really? What's their names? And I said, Billy Paul and Bradley Galen. He said, Galen? I said, yeah, that's my name. I said, oh, really? Why'd you name him Galen? I said, well, my cousin's doctor's name's Galen. And when I was naming him, she wanted to name him after her doctor. He says, that's funny, my dad's name's Galen and he's a doctor. And come to find out my son was named after his dad. <laughs> and just, you know, how often would that happen? Not very. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Small so, world. Yeah. 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 She still talks about Dr. Galen. Of course, they're all dead now and she's 95. Or 96, something like that, but yeah, we still discuss it. But, uh, well, we've covered a lot. Is there any one more story you want to tell before we close out? Well, we've covered the ice storm. We've covered the flamenco dancers. We've covered buses. We've covered the cafeteria line. Speed woman. Was quite a guy there. Speed? Speedy woman, speed woman. He worked in the station and he ran those steps. That was his exercise. He'd run up and down those steps to get his exercise. So, and he always was laughing and going on. He was there a long time. And then there was a walker that worked in the station and there was a Jordan and then that was my son's brother-in-law for a while. And he was working there one night I come in. There was this dog out there on the parking lot. And I'm a dog lover. And uh, it was a cocker, but oh my God, it had, oh it had, don't know when it had ever seen a groomer. It had been dumped and it had stick, oh, it was the most pitiful thing you ever saw. And James Jordan, they said, we're going to shoot it. I said, no, you're not. And I was trying to think of the other boy's name. He called me mom all the time. They all called me mom. And uh, said, uh, I said, no, you're not. I'm taking that dog home with me. Oh, you don't want that dog. I said, I'm taking the dog home with me. I said, that is a cocker and I said it's, I'm taking it I said I'm gonna get it cleaned up and ah uh, they was just teasing me I said James find some scissors and try to cut some of that stuff off that dog so James looked around till he found some scissors and he tried to bathe the dog and tried to cut it and, I mean he worked on it he had blisters on his hand so when my boyfriend come in, I, he had been to a rodeo. He was a bull rider. He had been to a rodeo. I said, there's a dog downstairs. And I said, I want you to take it home. Take it to my house. Oh, I said, I said. <laughs> so I got the dog and I worked on that dog. Finally, my boyfriend says, so. Brenda, taking it to Tulsa, we and uh, get it groomed. 
Spud's buddy did. He took it to Tulsa and got a hair cut off, and they had to shave it. And then I, there was a little old lady that needed a pet, so she got the dog, so it worked out. But that she had that dog for a long time, oh. but that was something else. It was yeah. meant for you to see it that night then? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It worked out for everybody. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, God works in strange ways. He does. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he brought you here today. I am too. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad it all worked out. And I just, there's so many stories, so many people, and I don't know why more don't want to contribute. Yeah, then maybe they will later. We'll I hope we'll because they've goes. all got, everybody's got, and uh, when I worked there the first time, well, uh, the gal that they've got shouting sack, uh, Looney, it was Jody Looney, and she married uh, Chris, uh, oh golly, age. Anyway, he was in service, and she was working there. And I always felt like she was a little above me, you know, and everything, but we got to be friends, and we went to see uh, Gone with the Wind together. And just, I don't know, just, you got to meet all people that you wouldn't run into. Now, one gal that worked there, Somehow, a guy that lived in San Francisco saw her picture and decided he wanted to meet her, and she, she stopped and married him and moved to, and I wondered whatever happened to a deal like that. And you always had people coming in. One time, I had a guy come in and young guy. I was single, had the two kids, I was divorced. So it was winter, and he was hauling cattle. And he asked me out. I thought, I better not. Nah, what the heck. Yeah, I'll go. And I was just breaking up with this guy that I liked, and so he can, it's okay. So it comes snowstorm. And I was going to, I decided, no, I don't want to do this, this isn't right, it's, you know, you don't just, so I was going to stand him up, I was going to leave. Well, it comes a snowstorm, and I thought, he won't show up because he was from Pittsburgh, and he had been a, he was a ranger of special forces, it was when Vietnam was going on, and uh, he'd gone through a lot in special forces. And so he, he didn't seem to have a real big sense of humor. And I just, I talked to him a lot. And before I said I'd go, well then I decided not to. So lo and behold, he knocks on the door. My kids run to the door, of course. Hi, who are you? I'm, I'm always going to stand you up. <laughs> and was you? Uh, yeah. Anyway, he called me when he got home. He, he said, well, I always go. And so he left. And he did call me when he, he said, I run off the road several times getting home. I want you to know. I never heard from him anymore. <laughs> Leave it to kids. Yeah. But you always wonder what happens to people. Yes, as many as you see through, come through yeah. and you wonder what the end, yeah. end of the story is. Yes. Well, with him being in special forces mm -hmm. and stuff, because they came back with some issues. People. I, I dated one that had been at POW back years ago, and uh, I just can't imagine what they went through. I just, you lose somebody and it's hard to lose them. But if you know somebody that you love has been tortured or is being tortured and everything, it's just, I can't, I can't imagine. I don't want 
want to. Mm -hmm. Don't want to. Mm -hmm. So. Well, just keep the good memories. Yeah. That put front and center. Yeah. Right. But the after dinner, it takes the bad to appreciate the good. That's true, too. If you win all the time, you don't appreciate it. That's like if you have everything you want. There's nothing to strive for. That's true, too. So. I think that's a good way to stop today. Yep. Thank you for coming. <laughs>